So I just uh, cut a couple of pieces of wood so you could see what, it, what that saw was cutting like and listen to it. You know, it doesn't sound that bad, even though it's dull and the teeth aren't in very good shape. It's been on there about 20 hours. And that's the saw that we looked at earlier with that big chunk tore off the tooth. Now I'm gonna go over there and have a real close look at the teeth. You can see how some of them are a lot narrower than others. This is after 20 hours. Now if you look at that, you can still, you can see those ridges in the shingle, but they're not really pronounced. And it depends on what the block is like. You can hardly see anything in that flat grain. It looks like a really smooth shingle. There's two other shingles. They're pretty well cut about the same time, maybe five, ten minutes apart. This one here, with all that torn fiber, that's not acceptable. You can't run a saw like that, but it was only one block. The rest of them were like that. So if you were going to decide, trying to decide when to take the saw off, if you had a lot of wood like that, pulling fiber out like that, you'd take it off right away. It wouldn't matter if it had been on there for 10 minutes or, you know, three days. You can't make shingles like that. But this is the way it was cutting most of the wood. It's a nice face on there. You can still see a few marks, and I'm going to show you the teeth that are doing that. But, I mean, uh, it's pretty decent, actually considering the way that saw was smashed up the last time it was out. It's pretty hard to uh, get this camera focused on the tooth when it's sitting on the machine. But Look at the width of that tooth right there. Anyway, not much left of those teeth. Then you go around the saw. Look at some of the other ones. Look at how wide they are. These two shingles are an example of what happens when you hit a rock with the shingle head saw. In this case, the corner of one tooth was tore right off. So it's leaving a big ridge. I turn the shingle over. It doesn't look too bad from that side, but you can see one of the teeth that was hit hard was actually forced over and it's gouging on this side. So on this side it leaves the wood. Same tooth on this side because it's pushed out of the, the same plane that the rest are riding in. It's gouging into the wood. So it can be moved over a little bit and this ridge would become less pronounced but it still wouldn't be acceptable. Now you've seen the uh, product it's a big gouges 
the big ruts. We're going to look at that tooth that's causing all the damage. You look at the tooth right there. That tooth, nice uniform tooth. The next one, corner has gone right off it. That's what happens when you hit a rock. Just ripped a chunk right out of the tooth. The next one, smaller piece missing. Next one, smaller yet. That tooth is also damaged. Probably about six or eight teeth were damaged. But the one that was causing the biggest problem is that one right there. So we'll be able to bring that up and get another, get that tooth back up. I'll show you a few of these other teeth here. While we're at it, we'll look at the clamping screw marks over here. When we're talking about the saw being consumed in the uh, daily repair and sharpening process, you can see right there how much that clamping screw moves every time. Each little ring shows you how much of the saw was used. The sledge just sits further and further down.